good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Thank you for uh, you know tuning in here to Code It Live. Um, this is the .NET Dev Show. Let's roll. Uh, let's see if I can uh, write some code today. So I have been working on something last year. I am a little bit into cross-platform dev. You, you may recognize the Maui shirt. I'm a little bit into that. So I was trying to build an app and I didn't finish it last year, so I'm going to just pick it up from where I left off. So what I'm doing here is if I head out to my our blogs, not mine, but our blogs, because it's you know all of us who write here, every Monday morning, there is this thing called uh, Sands of Maui. Uh, .NET Maui is uh, the newest you know cross-platform uh, evolution of cross-platform .NET stack, uh, goes to iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. And the goal is to share all the code that you can and be able to reach all these platforms. Um, so there's a lot going on in terms of you know excitement and lots of open issues and everything together. So I try to compile a list of you know five things that uh, anybody who's into .NET Maui should care to know each week. Uh, and I put that out as a newsletter um, up on the blogs, and it's called Sense of Maui. So. Uh, that is the newsletter, and it would be nice if you didn't have to subscribe here. You could have an app, and you just you know got a notification every Monday morning to say, hey, there's a new issue out. Go and get it. So that's what I will try to build up. So let's um, pull up the source code. Um, yeah, okay, so this one here, uh, I am using VS Code. Uh, I am on a Mac here. I, I do use Windows quite a bit here, but you know, uh, I'm mostly on a Mac. Um, so this one is uh, uh, using VS Code. Uh, VS for Mac is retiring. I still actually use it uh, sometimes, but VS Code, yes, the IntelliSense can be better, but uh, I mean, this is my daily driver nowadays uh, for, you know, .NET Maui. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it should give you, you know, some confidence. You, you can see the extensions, everything is coming up nicely. Um, uh, there are, you know, the .NET Maui dev kit, the C Sharp, um, uh, you know, extension. We have a couple in here. Uh, there's the generic uh, UEFA .NET Maui uh, extension. So in terms of, you know, extensibility and things, uh, it's it's coming up nicely. Okay, you can see my whole screen. So uh, yeah, everything should be set. Let's get going. So this project here. I restarted this once .NET 8 came out, uh, that was last November. Um, so pretty standard .NET Maui project here. Uh, I got some images I need to fix up. I got some nav to fix up. Uh, but essentially, I got my views. I got my uh, view models. And I have a couple of services. Um, the data is actually in coming in from Azure Cosmos DB. Um, so that's what uh, the Cosmos service does. And then I have a few models and the usual MVVM style layout. Uh, so these are some of my views. The target frameworks, the TFMs, that's kind of what dictates where the app goes. And yes, you can do iOS, Android, Windows. Um, but when I'm you know, doing my dev cycles, I like to stick to one um, and then, you know, uh, eventually run it on other platforms. So I have it on Mac Catalyst right now because then the builds are just a little bit, you know, quicker. Um, all right, hold on, exit. Just a little bit of background music. There you go. All right, so um, I have my views, I have my models, everything is set up here. Uh, let us run the app. I don't think I've actually done this in a while, um, but it should work on .NET 8 Mac Catalyst. Let's go ahead and um, run this. Hmm. So it does a build, it's got the terminal right there, so I can do a .NET build, um, so it's all the same thing. Uh, okay, it is running. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, okay, perfect. Digital Drummer says font is okay. So this is the app, okay? It's bare bones right now. It doesn't look like much, but I am building up the functionality, then I'll get to making it look nicer. Um, design and UX is an afterthought, right? <laughs> As one does. Um, okay, so up front you get a list of issues, and uh, this is coming down from an Azure Cosmos service. Uh, but I am caching it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the code. It's being put in a local uh, database, uh, and then um, I can uh, tap on any issue that uh, does another call, which is not cached. That's the one I actually have to cache. 
And this one also needs some formatting love uh, because what it's doing is going to Azure Cosmos DB and just pulling down a blob of uh, HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And I'm just rendering it in a big web view uh, and calling it a day. But I need to work on the fonts a little bit uh, and make things a little better. And also um, there is um, <laughs> Diesel drummer. Uh, I have to build the cake before I frost it. Yes, apparently. I still can't eat it, uh, but uh, we'll see. So here's my nav, and um, I'm thinking I might need to do some more work on this. It's fine. This is using the app shell, uh, but I'm not quite happy with the way it is looking right now, um, especially on desktop, because what I would like is replace that hamburger thing and have it kind of be compact and open all the time because I'm on desktop, I have more real estate. Maybe on mobile devices, it's fine. So I, I need to work on that. Uh, but anyways, once I pop that open, uh, I don't have a whole lot here. This just says, hey, uh, here is all about .NET MAUI. So it just points to the you know, landing page. Uh, also made with a little bit of Telerik UI in there. Um, so that probably takes us to our page. And let's see how the about page is working out. Uh, oh, this looks bad um, on desktop, uh, but it was, I think, meant for mobile. Uh, so these are some of the folks who help uh, put the newsletter together. That's Mandy, Jessica, and Cindy. Um, so I need to work on flexibility of how that view looks like on mobile versus uh, desktop. Uh, but I'll get to that. Uh, Oh, this looks broken. If I tap on that, it's not coming back. Oh, that's not fun at all. Sense of Maui. Oh, it, I can tap on that, but it's not coming back. Okay. So let's start and figure out what's going on. All right. So this can be closed. Uh, let's go into the shell first here. So this is the standard shell. And I have a header template here, blah, blah, blah. Item templates define how each of the items look like that. So that's where you get the icon and then the label. Um, it is being bound to something that's not here. Uh, let's see, where am I binding it to? Oh, I'm essentially just defining it right here. There is no extra dynamic binding. Okay. So fly out items is what I'm using. So these are working, but this is not working. And why is that? There's a data template. Uh, Alice blue, fly out width, all of that is good. Issue list view is not working. Why is that? It is called issue list view. It's going here. Yeah, it is called issue list view. So all of the other nav is working with the exception of this issue list view. Okay, what is local? CRL namespace sense of Maui. Uh, it should be the right one. Okay, I will tinker around and see what's wrong with that nav. Um, and also the other thing I, I was hoping to switch out was instead of um, the default fly out, uh, there is a nav, uh, I mean, I already have Telerik. So the list of things that you saw, that was a, a Telerik list view. So I could tap into a nav view that we have, uh, this one here. Uh, this one is a little bit smarter. So you'll see that on desktop, uh, I can have the hamburger menu and I can have, you know, expanded uh, list of things. I can have like a setting screen maybe for, you know, switching out light versus dark mode, um, data binding, display mode. Um, yeah, see, this is the one that I need. Display mode is compact. So I would like on desktop or maybe even like on an iPad or, uh, uh, a bigger tablet, uh, I, I want this. I want the icons to show, uh, not the whole menu, but that way you know a little bit more easier, um, you know, ways to navigate on a bigger surface area. 
so I can swap this out. Uh, but let's also work on the other thing that is not uh, okay. So let me show you what's going to happen. So first is uh, this list view, issue list view. So this is the one that shows a list of all the things. It's got a busy indicator first, and then we make the request out. And once we get the data back, we swap out um, the busy indicator with the actual list. And here's the list. This is the list view. It's binding to an icon. Um, issue detail. Okay, so this is a static icon and then it's binding to the name and the published date uh, for each one because that is coming from, so here's the model, issue is the model. So it's got ID, name and published, that's all. And that's all that's coming down. And if I look at the um, code behind, so what's being done on the first view is we are initializing the view model and oh i was playing around with the local notification i'll get back to that that's commented out for now uh, but then we are doing a fetch and we are swapping out we are handing off the list of items to the list view and calling it a day and this is the issue picked like when i actually tap on something uh, and this list view model is doing the brunt of the work here this view model so what it does is it creates a task of observable collection so I can easily bind of the type issue. Uh, and we are going to check first if the issue list is in the database. Um, if so, so if it's not in the database, then we go to the cloud service. That's the Cosmos service and it does a full fetch, which is a full RESTful API uh, to Azure Cosmos DB fetches the list. Uh, and then it actually writes it to the database. But if it's already in the database, then we don't want to go out. Um, you notice how there is absolutely no commenting in my code. I will fix things up. Maybe I can use uh, Copilot to write some comments here. Uh, but uh, this one is just me tinkering around, so it doesn't have anything. And then if it is in the database, then we go and rehydrate the list from the database itself. So um, let's do a debug and see, because uh, I have run this app a little bit. Uh, it should not be going to Cosmos DB anymore. But what I'm not caching is the actual issue when it comes back. So there's something to fix. Okay, so we hit a breakpoint. So this is, uh, okay, so you see the preferences here. It's immediately saying, hey, I can read a key value pair and uh, this is saying true. So preferences is just a .NET MAUI in-memory thing that actually get, persists between app runs on the, on the device. So this one is saying, hey, I, I have your list in the database. So there is no reason for you to go um, fetch it from the cloud anymore. So it comes down here. Okay, so that's what I was expecting. So. It um, <clears throat> hydrates this whole list of, I think I have like 50 or so uh, issues um, right in here from the database. So if I let it go, yeah. So this thing, we are not hitting the cloud at all. This thing is coming down local. But when I tap on each issue, that's when I am um, hitting the cloud every time, which I need to fix. Hey, Thindal, hey, hey, hey. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, Findel, you remind me, um, there, there's something hitting your mailbox uh, later today. Uh, just just FII. Um, only Thindel would understand uh, what I'm talking about. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, so, yeah, I am well. I am well. Um, had a good, you know, I hope everybody had it, you know, uh, a relaxing set of holidays. Now we are back in the group of things. Uh, yeah, mine was not bad. Cannot complain at all. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm not doing here is uh, caching the actual call. Yeah, you have a guess, Thindal. Uh, right, so let's look at our database service. 
uh, services local database so you see here i have um I'm using SQL Lite. Um, so if I go down here and CS Proj, you're going to see that I have a dependency here uh, for right now. Uh, so Telerik UI, Cosmos DB, SQL Lite, and I think this raw bundle is kind of needed by SQL Lite. Uh, short of steroids, so now she is zoomier than ever. Wow. Why is your cat taking steroids? Um, has she been sick or anything? I mean, cats have a lot of energy and then you add the steroids, so that's gonna make it very zoomier. Yeah. Um, so, oh, okay, I'm sorry uh, if she's sick. Hopefully she gets better. Um, so I'm using this to write uh, a local file uh, on the device that I'm running. Um, and that's the file name. So it's just a flat file DB3, uh, but it's sandboxed within the app context. So it gets the path name for the app and the app directory, SQLite uh, open read write mode. And here's the connection. So I come down here and I create a list, uh, but this is um, save issue. So this is writing each issue to the database from the list but I'm not actually writing the um, fetched uh, thing. So I think um, I need to redo this a little bit. So let's, let's create two databases, issue list database. This is way too verbose. Issue list DB file name, okay. And Look how intelligence is, you know, C sharp intelligence is pretty good on VS Code. So, uh, issue detail db file name equals should I? Versus with a SQL light uh, name, yeah, maybe for now. TB three. So everything needs to be renamed. Uh, Does it do a rename like Visual Studio does rename symbol? Yeah, so it should rename it. List DB path. Yeah, it kind of does it. So I should have done it here as well. So here's the issue list database. And both databases, I need them to be read write so I can use the flags. So this is the issue detail db path. Uh, and we're going to use this file name here. So we got now two databases. Uh, list and detail okay file name is fine i also need to do this so let's do um, list and i need another one so we are doing a lazy loading of the database so when it's needed we're going to create the database. Um, oh, interface. Uh, I should, I should, but uh, I never needed it until now because I was just doing one database. Now I have two. So yes, you're right. I, I should be um, having to pick, but happy path first. Okay. 
<laughs> let me just get it to work uh, and then I will fix it up and uh, see what I need to do. Uh, okay, so what is the database? SQL async connection. So I cannot just call it a database here because I will have two connections. Um, Okay, and, and let's call this issue detail database, all right? So issue list database uh, is now, if it is uh, not now, we can return it. Uh, if uh, it is now, we can create a new connection to the issue list DB path uh, with using those flags, that's fine and we're going to also create the table if it's the first time that's been used uh, but if it is the detail then um, we got to use the issue detail db is not null then we're going to create the uh, detail db now the file path is going to be issue detail file path Same flags, result, issue, list, db, no, issue, detail, db. Go ahead and create the table. Uh, oh, I cannot just create a table of issues because issues is this, while issue detail is what I want. So issue detail has the, um, HTML body. <clears throat> okay, so Thindal, you have a good point. Why am I creating two databases instead of two tables? You are absolutely right. Um, then I have to just call it 1db3. <laughs> You're smart. Uh, I, I don't need any any joins between the tables. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Then I can have a single connection. You're right, so smart. So let's redo the whole thing. Um, all right. Mm. Let's call it db in it. This is in case uh, there is no database. So let's rename that to sans of Maui db file. Sans of Maui SQLite DB3. Okay, so done with that. Uh, don't need that. Now I um, this one can also be renamed. Hey, JD. Good morning. Good morning. I saw you last week. Last week, so JD and a bunch of us were at a conference called Code Mesh in uh, Sandusky, Ohio, and it was good times. It was good times. Yeah. Uh, for a change, we normally uh, like we as in progress to Eric, we sponsor uh, Code Mesh, but we weren't this year, uh, so I didn't have to be at a booth all day. So I. Uh, got to take my family and the kid uh, did like a kid smash. They have a whole track for 
uh, kids, which is nice. So he did that for a day and enjoyed it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's write this as sans of Maui DB path. Path combine, sans of my DB file. SQL flag says fine. I don't need two connections. Thanks to thanks to Thindle. So this can now be called one thing. Sans of Maui DB connection. All right. Um, it was kind of thin. Yeah. Uh, in-person conferences are having uh, an interesting time it's it's a little bit of a hit and miss it's it's hard to say some conferences are back to full strength um after the pandemic but some are and a lot of the uh, you know heartland ones or the community ones are in a you know bit of a mixed bag where attendance is up but maybe sponsorship is a little down uh and yeah it's it's difficult because there there is the so what causes a recession is the fear of recession uh, often because uh, like companies are scared um sometimes to spend the money to uh, have folks go and attend uh, and also you know be out there themselves but at the same time that kind of you know spirals everything uh, together so yeah, yeah, um, Chad, I heard you had to pull out a code match because you were supposed to speak. Hopefully, uh, uh, some are doing well, some are not. Yeah, hopefully, Chad, it wasn't uh, a health thing, or if it was, I hope it's you know, fixed up uh, for now. Um, yeah, Sweat Hug, yeah. Major issues finding sponsors. So Thindle is in Sweden, and uh, Sweat Hug is coming up, I think, next month early next month i think uh our good friend ed uh ed is scheduled to go uh, but yeah it's it's a bittersweet thing for conferences like some conferences like kcdc visual studio live because i mean that's not a community driven one so some of them are back to their normal strength but i think you know enterprises are picking and choosing where they spend the money and also where to send their folks so yeah all right, so SQL that connection. I have a single connection now, DB in it. Uh, if the connection is not now, uh, we will go ahead and create a connection using the DB path, using the flags. And then we are going to create the table. OK, so now this is where uh, we'll have to figure out to create two tables instead of one. So might as well create both if we are initializing it. Um, I am not returning anything. All I need is uh... Uh, what are you saying? If you feel like I could bring the site up and look at the first time slot. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you got going on? Yeah, what was I looking at? Sweetan, if I'm spelling that right. No. Gee. Yeah. That's the one that's coming up in Sweden. Well, they, they have some sponsors, uh, but you know, I know. Yeah, it gets tricky. Schedule. Oh, Maddie is up. Uh, oh, and there is Eric Johansson. Uh -huh. You are fighting Maddie. <laughs> uh, good, good times, yeah. Um, I have been to Sweda multiple times this year. Um, I, I just have a busy February, so I, I didn't think it was nice uh, for me to uh, take that time off. But maybe, I mean, they, they do another one, I think, later on in the year. Uh, yeah. I don't know where he was going. Anybody else from the Mario teams? Uh, oh, Fritzy is up. Uh, Cecilia. Oh, Brandon Minnick is up. Okay. So a lot of the .NET folks. Layla. Uh-huh. And Angstroms, of course. Okay. 
yeah, a lot of good familiar faces. Chris, my good friend Chris is there. Irina is there. Yeah, that's a good conference. Luce is there. I love these folks. Um, so yeah, looks like you'll have a good time. Um, I think the hunger uh, is there from the community to go and, you know, attend and, and learn. It's just, you know, how we come together. Um, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Oh, full Schnabel is there too. Yeah. All right. So uh, now I'm creating two tables. Uh, I do want that issue detail table now. All right, so I have the database, single database, like you suggested. Single file path, um, single connection, single flag. Now this is where I have a get, that's fine. And I have a save. Yeah. Companies are penny pinching. Yeah, I mean you you, you understand a little bit of that. Um, you know, companies and and I'm now you know I I see both sides of the story because like I am a speaker, I'm an attendee, uh, but I'm also on the sponsorship side. So um, you know, companies have to spread the love around, uh, the dollars around, because otherwise you know what ends up happening is. Uh, you end up hitting the same audience over and over again, uh, year after year. Uh, so that's not uh, the ideal situation either. So, yeah, it's a mixed bag. All right. Um, are you sync innumerable? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Let's see, the get is there. I need a save issue detail to DB. And I need to be passing in an issue detail. Issue to insert is fine. DB connection insert async. Oh, how do I tell it which one to insert into? So it creates both tables. <laughs> no, you don't need to stop refactoring. I'm, I'm learning. Um, then you can do an await uh, for each. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can get to that. I am trying to see what uh, this exposes for me to choose which table to write to. Uh, this is insert async. It has a couple of overloads, so let's see what it is. The object to insert, okay. Then, wait, this. Um, object string extra. Object type. How do I choose which table to write to? Yeah. Accelerator. I think it uses the type of the object. It's yeah, it's like that smart to figure out which. So on the init, I'm creating these two tables. This is the table that's tied to this type of object. You think it's smart enough to do that? Uh, we can give it a try. Because uh, this this is code that is kind of flatly borrowed from the .NET MAUI docs. I think they had an example. Uh, but I couldn't go look at the SQLite um, implementation of things as well. Uh, Maui docs, uh, where did I get that? Data and cloud, there we go, local databases. SQLite, doo -doo -doo. create a database class, create a table, to do item. And uh, yeah, yeah, they're just doing an insert. 
You think it's smart enough? I mean, you'd think there would be a way to specify advanced configuration, write ahead locking, logging, copy database, no, none of that. Yeah. Now, SQLite, uh, by the way, this is not maintained by Microsoft. This is our good friend. Um, what's his name? Uh, Plea Clarum. Pray Clarum. Um, I, I know who that is, actually. He's very smart. Uh, I'll show you who that is. I'm forgetting his name. Uh, that is Frank Kruger. This gentleman here. Super smart guy. So... He still maintains it, and that's the one Microsoft is all, you know, asking us to go use because nobody else maintains it. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, what was the first parameter of the insert async? If it was an object, then I'm guessing it is smart enough to know. It is the first parameter of insert async. Object type overload. Okay. So... Wait, where did my IntelliSense go? Oh, here. Where is my IntelliSense? Oh, there you go. Uh, insert or replace. No, that's it's just that. Now, these are all the methods. No, it's not giving me the intelligence that I need. Come on. All right. I'll rewrite that. Insert async. What's insert all async? OK. So the flat out thing is give me an object to insert. Second is give me an extra object to insert. Inserts again object. The return value is the number. Oh, number of rows added. That's fine. I don't care for that. But it doesn't tell me how it's using that extra actually. And then uh, this was the thing you were talking about. Um, uh, the type, object type. Well, I mean, I am passing in the object. Uh, let's see what you are all are saying. Uh, inherited class in a parent table. Yeah, let's try with an object. Because um, I think it should do. It should be smart enough. And then if it doesn't, we'll figure it out. So you, you can actually look at the DB3. It's just a file that's dropped. Um, and we can find out where that is because i'm running this on a mac uh, it's a little harder on ios or android because it's you know inside of a simulator but this one here here's the project uh where is it where is it sense that and then if i look in my bin or is it obj it's way down inside okay Uh, and it actually might not show all. <laughs> Hold on, I am going to have to show. Uh, show. I forget the keystroke. Hidden files. So it is. Um, There's a shortcut. Just tell me that. Control Shift Command. Command shift period. Okay. So command shift period. Oh, there it is. So let's look at bin debug net iOS Mac catalyst. Notice how like even the runtime and the TFM is captured right there. Um, okay. So arm 64. Where is it? Where is it? All types of libraries. There's the executable. Skia, SQLite stuff. Oh, this is all system stuff. Uh, 
<laughs> Full Studio can load it in the DB Explorer at least, but not sure about VS Code. Huh? Well, we are handicapped with VS Code, if if I may. But no, it's catching up fine. I don't want to go to Full Studio on a Mac. I mean, I do have it on Windows. Um, let, let's try running it. Uh, what we will do is it's going to clash with the older DB3 file. So what I can do is just blow it away and see what I get. So I haven't done anything here except I've just added a issue detail. I'm not, you know, using it yet. So what I have changed is the database file name and the path would be the same with the file name at the end. And then we are creating two tables. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens if we blow it away. So we're going to go in debug and move this to trash. Go away. iOS. I don't think I've run iOS in a while. Go, go away as well. All right. Uh, so let's run this again. And we're going to put a breakpoint right as it's being asked for. Uh, and that is in the issue list here. Um, well, it's in the view model, actually, issue list view. Okay, so I do already have a breakpoint here, so we'll go see what it's doing. Run, start debugging. There is a plugin to open SQLite? Ah. Yeah, it's just different, different ecosystems. Okay, so now preferences issue list in DB is true. Oh, so I did blow away the whole app. So that flag is not the database. Um, where is that flag? Because that's part of the that's part of the app installation. Uh, how do I blow that away? What if I blow away all of this? Uh, let's see, is the app installed? Okay, so there's the app, but it it's not installed. I mean, it's running on the Mac itself, but it, like I blew it away, it shouldn't be here anymore. Let's clear this out one more time. Let's try it. On a, um, on a iOS, it's easier to just do the uninstall of the whole app than the DB3 and the um, flag just goes away. Yeah, I'm doing this on a Mac. Uh, yeah, all right, let's run it again. Oh, no, I said without debugging. No, I do want the debugging. Stop, stop, stop. That's fine. It's going. So, oh, see, it is blank. Why is it even blank? Okay. Run this in debug, please. All right, now this thing is still true. What if we actually force it inside? Wait, what happened? Come inside. No, why can't I just go inside here? It's not wanting to go inside that. And it, it it's trying to find that database, but the database isn't there. So that's why it's blank. All right, I get it. OK, come back. I just want you to get inside here. Or uh, maybe we'll just set the variable to false uh, forcibly. So much for just a database thing. What is this Mac thing you speak of? 
Uh... Like, how do I change this value? Uh, do I need to put a watch? But yeah, let me change that. That's what I'm trying to do. Ah, rename no. How do I do that? Invert if. Oh, there. No. How do I change this? Okay, I can. What I can do is. I'm just trying to force it to come inside this loop and it doesn't, see? Ah. Immediate window, variables panel. Ah, the variables panel, where is the variables panel? But it's not showing me anything here. How can I add? And also, why doesn't this work? Like I'm just, you know, I have hit a breakpoint. I'm just trying to drag it down into this that it doesn't like it. Differences between VS and VS Code. Okay, so hold on. Uh, I think it may also be like it's using the .NET MAUI um, debugging thingy. It doesn't actually have a debugging thingy but launch json i need to maybe create that for more configurability of of how logging is working um here's what i can do i can just forcibly make it come down all right how do you like that now you don't have a code path to follow okay i always want you to go to the cloud bring down a list of issues and we're going to write that to the db and then set that to true all right all right let's run this again it's trying okay go next Okay, now you're hitting the cloud service, list of issues. I'm gonna wait for you here, because that's an async call. Spins, all right, now we have a list of issues and now this, all 50 of them, this is coming from Azure. And now we're gonna see what you do. Just get in. Oh, uh, hold on, it's already created that DB. Save to DB, so it's already hit that point. So save issue to DB. And for each one to write, comes down here. That's issue number one it's trying to write. So DB in it at this point has created the file path. So look at that. Oh, so that, that's the um, uh, file path. I was looking at the wrong place. So it's SAM MVP, which is the name of the machine library, and then Sansa Maui SQLite uh, DB. So it is creating a new database right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go to evil. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, library Sansa Maui. All right. So that's how I can load the database away. All right. I'll let this fly. Take out that. Take out that and that. All right, go. All right, uh, stop there and go. And where are you now? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it did pull back from the cloud, but let's take a look what it did. So this thing was in. So here's my home directory. It said library. And like right there, why is it right into the library? Like it shouldn't not be like 
uh, within the app sandbox. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Why is it doing that? Huh. And I'm guessing the other issues. So this was the older DB, which was where I was writing it just a issue list to that DB. So it's writing it to straight up to the library on a Mac. <laughs> go to. I, I did some go to in COBOL. It was not fun because you never knew how to debug because it's just jumping all over the place. But in debug mode, I should be able to just drag it to wherever. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It's. Uh, I don't know if I can open up a DB3 file. Can I? Um, what does it do? Xcode? Can Xcode open it? Macdown? No. No, it's going to be gibberish. Who can open a DB3 file? Xcode? Let's see how Xcode says. Uh, look, an hour flies by. I'm not even being able to create or do anything, but that's fine. Oh, what is this? No, it has no way of opening this. Wait. It's prompting me for permissions. Yeah. No, it's it's not gonna open it. I mean, I'm sure there are you know programs that will open up DB3 files. Okay. So, what have we done? So we have written it to DB. That one works fine. But we what we haven't done is this part where we are writing the detail. To the DB as well. Maybe I just try doing that. So, oh yeah, so there is VS Code SQLite. Okay, thank you, thank you, Thindal. I will go look on that. Uh, but let's see what we set out to do. This is the issue list. Uh, uh, it's going to be in the view model. So, this view model says, hey, I'm going to check if this is this. If not, I'm going to get it from that. Um, but what I'm not doing is on this view model, I am always going to the cloud service. So this is the one where I need to go check first. All right. And what exactly was issue list? Wait, I have those things. Oh, this, this is what I need. Set inside uh, the task, fetch data. Yeah, this is doing fetch data. Okay, so issue detail in database preferences. Now, uh, this is the thing. Like, so for the issue list, I was just doing one check, but here, for each uh, detail that I write, I have to write it with the ID to check. Um, I'm not sure about the Cosmos part, but you have already tested that in the app. Yeah, yeah, the Cosmos part is working. Uh, but this is where I need to check what exactly I'm doing. So let's get the database service up here as well. Because like how I write each issue matters. So this is the issue detail. So when I'm setting this to say this, it cannot just be one flag. It has to be one flag per issue. Uh, so the key has to include um, the actual issue number. Yeah. Okay, so cloud service, we're gonna go that. This 
is what I'm using. So we are fetching a given issue because now I have a selected issue ID for each issue. I don't need a for loop anymore. Because now it's not a list. Uh, yeah. Now th this is going to be save issue detail to the database. Now it's in the preferences that I need to be careful how I set that. So I do have the issue, um, issue ID. So that has to be a part of it. Hmm. So let's say issue number, um, this. So that way I am making a note of exactly which one um, I'm writing. This has to be up here, so I can do a check before. So issue number that. So Instead of the list, I'm going to check on the exact identifier, but we're going to start assuming false. Name of the Cosmos service. This all should be um, singleton. Uh, this all should be uh, like not instantiated every time. So again, happy path. I'm, I'm trying to get it to work first before I can uh, refactor all of these things out. Because all of this essentially brings uh, belongs in the Maui program.cs. This is where I should, you know, instantiate all of the objects that I need in one place and not have to redo it over and over again. But happy path first, right? Um, so now we can open up these lines of code. Um, if issue detail is not true then we go to the cloud fetch the issue based on the id and write it to a database and set the preferences mark it true that i have this issue in detail in the database or or uh, i have to get it from the cloud or i have to return there's nothing called issue detail anymore. New observable collection of issue detail. Get it functional, slop counts, get it tested. Yep, get it refactored, rinse and repeat. Yeah, yeah, get it functional. <laughs> That's the first point, like get it to work first. Uh, okay, and I don't have a get from the database, right? So let's go into the database and that's a save. We never wrote the get. Here's the get. Get issue detail from DB. And this would need um, an ID to be passed in. Uh, here I was passing in, uh, it can just be a string for now. issue ID 
and uh, I need to look up the code on exactly how they were doing this. Dot platform app UI, da da da, local database. Okay, here. Configure uh, data manipulation. That's the to do get items async. I want uh, uh, this one here. Uh, I want this. Right? That's a save. So return DB connection dot table dot issue detail. No, 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 hold on. This is the DB connection, right? Their database was what? The database was their connection? Yeah, they were just calling it the connection. So we're going to say use that connection. And the table should be issue detail. That's what I use, right? Uh, yeah, issue detail where uh, int issue ID where uh, ID is equals issue ID. That'll do. And first our default is fine. And then I can take out this line of code. There we go. Uh, oh, it's not liking this. Why? Uh, what? Oh, this thing is a string because uh, the ID is a string for me. Fine. Are you happy now? Why are you complaining now? Issue detail to... I'm not returning a list. Why are you getting me a list? Uh, oh, this one here. Uh, this will just be an issue detail. There you go. Okay. Happy. Um, okay. Uh, JD has a meeting. Got a jet. Good seeing everyone. Yeah. Good seeing you, JD. Um, I am going to stop, uh, as well myself in a couple of minutes, as soon as I can get this to work. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. So get issue detail from DB is now set up. We can go in here and uh, this was the get uh, issue view model, uh, da, da, da. issue list in DB. No, this is the, that's the issue list. This is the one that we want. Now we're going to return issue detail and it's issue detail away database service. What did I call it? This was called get issue detail here. There. Why do you not like it? There is no argument given. Yeah, I know there is no argument given. I'm about to give you that. Uh, that is selected issue ID. Happy now? Why are you not happy? Oh, I see. Well, I, I already have a selected issue. I can just do that. There. And now what? Uh, issue detail to... Uh, Findle, I'm still struggling here, so hang in there with me. Um, I'm not doing something right. Uh, this is awaiting, cannot convert. What? Uh, where, are, where are you getting the I innumerable? This one was fine. Oh, I do. I need to return the in uh, the int because it does actually. Uh, no, I am trying to 
it's not a list number of inserted items here yeah. but I'm not doing the save um, that's the save but here it's just give me the issue detail so I'm going to that table matching the issue ID first or default that part is fine but when I try to invoke it well, maybe it doesn't need to be an observable collection. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah, hold on. That is the problem. Because I don't need that anymore. I'm trying to cast something which is not needed. There. Okay. So, come down here check if I have that list uh, that particular detail in the DB if I don't go to Cosmos get it write it and then if I come back the next time check if I have it and so on looks good I think let's see what we have okay and uh, where did we leave the list should I have it probably has written it to the DB so we'll go check All right, uh, okay, um, we are hitting up. What is this issue list view model? Uh, issue list MDB. Oh, we are always going to the cloud. That's fine. Go to the cloud. I'm fetching grains of sand. Okay, here we go. So now if I hit uh, number one, now you're in the detail thing, okay? So selected issue ID is one. So it should be issue number one that we are writing. Boolean get preferences issue identifier, which is now issue number one. Database service issue number one should be false as we expect. Come down here, go to the cloud and let's stop here so the await is done spins okay now we have the preferences issue identifier is issue number one we're going to set that to true and we did call database service save issue oh there is the html ah nice nice there's the whole html body blah 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 okay so i will let that go hopefully it's been written out right here's the html now this one is coming from cosmos who's that guy see this is the setup that i normally have when i'm streaming by myself but today my obs said nope not your day uh go back and let's hit that again okay now we have identifier of issue number one and now the database should say I have it. Yes. Step in, go into hydrating from the database. Selected issue ID is one. So now uh, it, it is going to literally invoke this line, which is going to go into the issue detail. Let's see if it was smart enough to get the right thing. Because that will mean that it, um, it, it just went off the type to know which one to write it on. Uh, let's put a breakpoint here. Send. Okay. It is working. Yeah. Yeah. And go. And same HTML. Okay. Same HTML, but now I did not go to go to Cosmos. This is coming back. Uh, formatting is way off, but that I can fix. Yeah. 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 This is coming straight from the DB. So SQLite is working. Okay, so I did the very basic thing that I was trying to do, and that is cache the detail uh, for each one. So Thindal, thank you for your help uh, in not making me look so stupid that I was creating two databases for creating or saving uh, two very similar things. Apparently this thing is smart enough, so I'm creating now one DB 
and I have one DB path, one set of flags for read write, and I'm creating two tables in here. One is for the issue, one is for the issue detail. And what is nice here is uh, SQLite is smart enough. All I'm doing here on the save is insert to async. Here I'm giving it a single issue to insert in a list, or I'm giving it uh, uh, which one an issue detail, uh, and it knows uh, which one to insert where. I'll see you on the next stream, folks. Um, all right, so take care and bye-bye for now.